And we're on the air. Welcome to Z School by 12.3, 20.4. Today we're going to go over importing data into Zoho CRM. Going to go kind of quick today. Uh, the reason we're doing this today, uh, the last three sessions we talked about the modules in CRM. We talked about uh, creating custom modules. Last week we talked about uh, customizing your screens, adding fields to the modules to track the kind of things you want to track. So now today we're, we want to import data into our new custom modules. So there's kind of a logical flow here. Pretty soon we're going to start talking about random topics, uh, just things in CRM in no particular order. But right now I, I look at when you're setting up Zoho CRM, this is kind of like the sequence of events. We got to define your, your entities. We got to add them. We got to custom uh, customize the screens. Today we populate with data. Um, so let's get started here. Um, some random thoughts about uh, importing. The terms in the uh, IT world, it's called ETL, extract, transform, and load. So normally our job is to extract data from an existing, electronic data from existing systems. Uh, your old CRM system, your accounting system, Outlook lists, uh, whatever you have it in, we got to gather it up. And then we got to transform it. We've got to get it into a format that's friendly to Zoho. And that means deduping it, uh, you know, cleaning it up. It's all garbage in, garbage out. And then you load it in. Zoho makes the load really easy. The hard part in all this is the transform. And it requires you to know what Zoho's requirements are. In other words, if you're going to transform your data, you got to know what to transform it to so that Zoho can make the best possible use of it. Um, but this is called ETL. So some things that you need to know about Zoho. Zoho likes names split out. You might have some data that has name and it's all, you know, Joe Smith or Joseph L. Smith III, PhD, CPA. Um, in which case you got to kind of break it all out into first, middle, last, prefix, suffix, things like that. Sometimes you get in a complete address, which is really seven fields in Zoho. It's... Uh, um, street, city, state, zip, country, uh, if you want county, things like that. And then you have to know your field types and that can depend on, uh, normally the data you pull out of your system will put everything kind of into text, but you might want a pers a certain piece of data to be a date. And the date might be 1-1-2020, or it might be January 1st, 2020, or 1-Jan 2020. So you want to kind of get everything into good format. Same with number fields. Um, just to talk about it, an old CRM system we still support is called Goldmine. Goldmine has three kinds of fields in it. It has uh, text fields, number fields, and date fields, just three. But Zoho has about 30 kinds of fields. You can have a picture field. You can have a phone field. A phone number looks like a number, but it's formatted. And when you touch it, it can dial. Um, and then... If, there's uh, maybe five or six different kinds of number fields. For instance, currency is a number, but it has a dollar sign or a euro sign in front of it. So you might have a number field that is an integer. You might have a number field that goes out to seven decimal places. Um, different kinds of numbers, and you want to know exactly. Uh, if I have a field called interest rate, I may want a lot of decimal places. But if it's a dollar amount, I, I just want two and I want to put a dollar sign in front of it, and I want commas in the right places. So there are different kinds of fields, and we kind of talked about that last week. And it means you got to get your data in a format that um, Zoho will recognize. For instance, if I have a date field in Zoho and I try to drop in a value of the of today, T O D A Y, that's text. That's not a date. Um, so you got to get it into a date field. It's kind of um, obvious but then again it's not it's common pitfalls that people run into when they try to do their own importing another neat feature of zoho is that you can just undo an import if you do an import and you do it wrong or you don't like it uh, you can just back it out 
Um, I don't know. It, you can't back it out forever. You wouldn't want to. You'd want to back it out sooner rather than later. Because once you put data into the system, people start using it. And if you if you remove those contacts, then all the phone calls and stuff related to them might back out. They will back out. So there's like a 30 or a 60 day limit on how long you have before you can undo a backup. I mean, an import. Uh, so normally you use the undo function within an hour. It doesn't matter if it's 30 or 60 days, but it's kind of cool that it's there because if you throw a bunch of data into the system and you throw it in wrong, um, it can be a real pain trying to find the bad records to get them out of your good production system. So you do the import and if you don't like it, you just hit an undo button, pulls it right back out. It's a neat feature. It makes the whole process. If you want to try it yourself, uh, a little more friendly and possible. Um, so the first example I'm going to do is what I call a basic module import. This is where I'm just importing some names into one module. Um, and there's two kinds of those. So, you know, I'm going to, the example I'm going to use is leads. We, we, uh, say we went to a trade show and we, we met a hundred people and now we want, we don't want to have to type them in. We want to import them. So just bringing in some leads. Uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, linking them to phone calls and emails and events and so forth. Just bringing in some names. Um, there are actually three versions of that. One is called update only, which is uh, I'm only updating uh, records that exist. I have to match on a field. One, one use of this is say you want to, you take your database and you extract it, you export it, and you send it to a, uh, a company that will verify all the addresses, make sure they're still there and that the and it'll do the zip plus four. The U.S. Post Office will do that for you. So uh, they'll they'll make sure the address is like accurate and in the format they want. And they'll zip plus four of the zip codes. And then you want to bring it back in. And um, you only want to update the database. You don't want to add it in and create a whole set of duplicates. You just want to update existing records. Then there's an add only where I'm only bringing in records that are new. But if the guy already exists in the database, um, skip them. And then there's something, so that's called an insert. So you have an update, an insert, and then you can say do both, which is called an upsert. And an upsert means um, update existing records and insert new ones. If they don't exist, add them. Uh, so you'll have some options when you go through this, and I'll show that to you. Again, it all depends on what your business case is and what your goals are. Um, so let's, I'm going to shrink down my presentation here and go into our demo CRM system. And I will go to the leads module because that's where I want to import. And you'll see when I go to the leads list, be a little bit patient. Here's my leads list. There's an import button right here. And if I click on that, I'll be importing into leads. And I can import into, say, my products list. We haven't really talked about it, but I can import. There are none, so I can import from here. Otherwise, I'd have an import button in the exact same place, and I can import products. Um, so we'll go back to leads. And I will um, I'll actually show you the file I created for import. I called it some random leads and I'll just show you what it looks like. It is a spreadsheet. I have a field here called lead ID. doesn't really matter in this case, but I have a, com a company name. I have a, uh, sorry. I have a uh, title field. Most of it's empty. I have a first, a last name, a phone, a fax, and a, hold on, and I have an email field. Pretty simple. So this is like the bare minimums. And I should have also mentioned, if you have a field that's required in Zoho, say we have email is required, you can't enter a lead without an email. 
If that's true, then these leads that don't have an email, they won't import. They'll get, they'll be skipped. Um, and if you have too many skips, the system will shut down after 5,000. It'll think there's a problem. Uh, so if you have a, if you've made a lot of fields mandatory in your system, that can, that could prevent a good import from happening. Um, so I am going to download this field. Give me a second. So I'm going to come over here to import. I'm going to import leads. It says from a file and I'm going to browse and I have in my downloads file, the, I called this file some random leads, just some random data I got. And so it's an Excel spreadsheet. What format can this be? It can be a text file, CSV, TXT, Excel. Uh, there are limits. You cannot import. 20 million records, um, they'll bark at you if you hit some limit, but you can import tens of thousands. I hit next. Um, Zoho is actually, this is the upsert stuff. I can add these as new leads. I can update existing leads only, or I can do both. So, and of course, if I'm gonna do new leads, I can also skip leads, say, based on email address, which is probably the only field you want to match on. What it means is if this email address already exists in the system, skip it. Um, if you try to do it based on, uh, you'll see like names not there because you can have two guys named Bob Smith, but then your data might be Robert Smith. And so it's going to go in anyway. It's really hard to do dupe checks on names. Um, so they have an ID field and they have an email field. Email is a much common. So um, I'll just add as new leads. Say next. And now it's going to, um, we do our field mapping. Uh, um, sorry, first time user. I named my columns very well, but this might have been called uh, account. And, you know, I called this column first. It's showing me actually sample data over here on the right. So I can see what first means. Might be date of first sale or something. Uh, but this is the uh, field in leads that I want to bring it into. And it assumed I wanted to bring it into first name. It's trying to be smart. But maybe I wanted to put it in uh, number of employees. We're not bringing anything into that field, but you know we could have. It's a field. Uh, any fields that are mandatory will have little stars in them. So our system has said we need a company name and a last name. So if any of my records don't have last names, they're not coming in. But I am bringing in email, mobile, phone, fax, title. So I, I named my columns in my spreadsheet pretty well. Zoho was able to figure out. Uh, sometimes it sees street and address, it, it won't match them up. You'll have to go in here and say, I want street to go into address. Uh, so this is the mapping section. And I've got one field here called lead ID, which is a number and I'm not gonna map, but I don't have any place to put it. Uh, so it's telling me it's unmapped. Um, so we'll go next. It's warning me that one of my fields is not coming in and that's fine. I don't wanna bring it in, so. Um, I have some optional things here. I can assign all these leads um, to a person or based on rules. We haven't talked about assignment rules, but I could have a rule that says, if state is Pennsylvania, give it to Fred. Um, something like that. I can also assign a task in here. So I could, uh, I have some tasks already built, like you need to a uh, new show lead, you must follow up kind of thing. And I can uh, enable approval, and we haven't talked about approval. So for today, I'm going to leave all these blank. We're just bringing them in. And it says it's been scheduled, and it can take a few minutes, but it, it just happened. Um, this will take less than a minute because I only have about 50 names. So I'll refresh. It's done. I got a little pop-up here says it's done. And now if I look at all of my leads here, I have more. Uh, there's like four people at the Beaumont Lumber Company here. So 
if I click on one of these leads, it will tell you that, you know, it was created by Homer at 1117 today. And the lead is in the system now. I didn't bring in much. I brought in um, first, last name, company, email, phone. Uh, he didn't have a fax or a mobile. So uh, I didn't bring in address. Could have brought it in, but I didn't. So these came in. So I want to show you how to see uh, your import results. You go to the setup. And under data administration, the first entry is import. We're going to import data here next, our next example. But uh, I can actually come over here to import history. And it shows me all the imports I've done, I believe, for the last 60 days. And it showed me that it added 60 people, but it skipped 33. And if I click on the skipped 33, it's telling me that the last name was blank or the company was blank. And by my rules, I said company was a mandatory field. So it skipped these records. Um, these look like largely empty records anyway. I'm not sure where they came from. So I'm okay with this. It did, it did add 60. Uh, there were no existing records to update, uh, and it did skip 33. So these are the ones that came in okay. Um, and again, there's a little, you have to float over it, but if I want to undo this import, I can just hit that button, and it will remove everything I imported. Uh, I'm going to just look at the chat here, see if we have any questions. We don't. So now let's go to the next type of import, which is a... Uh, let me bring down some files here. So the next one is where I want to bring in an entire system. Uh, you probably won't ever need to do this, but it's there. And we're going to come over here to import. And Zoho tries to make it easy to say, come from salesforce.com. It's called a data migration. You're going to move over not just leads, but contacts, accounts, opportunities, phone calls, emails, uh, you know, products. There are there can be many, many modules. And not only do you want to just import these things, but you want to keep the relationships. You want to connect the contact to the right account and the phone call to the right contact and the opportunity to the right contact. So um, Zoho has some canned migrations. However, if you're coming from a product like ACT or uh, Goldmine or SalesLogix or there's about 300 other CRM systems, you don't have that. It says other CRM, but this is where things break down pretty quick because it's kind of a generic import. Um, so what I've done is in my, uh, I've created that extract transform just looking for my files to show you hold on here they are i've created some files already um they're all zipped up I've got a file of users and accounts and contacts and notes and calls and events. And I'll just, this is all demo data from an ACT system. And I'll just show you what a contact looks like. We'll actually open this up. The important thing is what's called an ID field. This is how you link a particular contact to a particular account and a note to a contact and a call to a contact and a user is a record owner for the contact so um, this file here has what's called a contact id and i actually use the person's name which isn't really good for him there could be two names joss in here um, in which case it could get uh, missed up. You want the contact ID to be very unique, but this is just kind of junk data. If I then show you a note here, 
Let me bring up that real uh, quick or not. The note has an ID, but the parent is, you know, John Guild. And so it will find that contact named John Guild and it will link it. Um, the parent ID, but the note could also be attached to an account to uh, something else. So notes can go anywhere, which is why they're just called parents. Um, again, these are the things you got to know when you do a, an import. Uh, I think I have to extract all these files because they got zipped up. So let's do a quick import. And this will be kind of magical that Zoho gives you this. So I'm going to go to Zoho CRM. I prefer this one when I'm bringing in multiple text files. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to bring in every one of these files. Um, they're in here or they're not. I didn't want that. Hold on. Sorry, I need to unzip that file. Should have done it. There they all are. Extract. Show and complete. They're there. All right, there they are. Let me delete this. So once again, it's asking me to get the files and I want to see six individual files here. So let's There they are. Now I call them what Zoho calls them, which is users, accounts, contacts, notes. Um, again, Oh, they got to all be CSVs. They are. How'd they get changed? When you do a migration, they need to all be CSV files. And I don't know why they got converted on when I did a download, but uh, give me a moment to, when they got zipped, they got changed. So I'm gonna find another batch of files very quickly. Give me one moment. I want to find somebody that's fairly small. Um, These are a little too big. Uh, okay, I have three here. Let me download these. I will unzip them. This is the kind of stuff you run into.
These are CSV files, so this is good. Hopefully they won't turn into uh, Excel files when I extract them. And so I will go back to, I'm at my Zoho import wizard. I can grab accounts, contacts, notes. This doesn't have calls, but um, I will browse my files. I could have dragged them on there. Downloads. Here they are, these three files. And I'm sorry for the slight delay. So it just uploaded them and it's also scanning for viruses. So just make sure you're not sending a virus up there. So we have accounts, contacts, and notes. And I like to turn off this notify email down here. This is gonna send a, a, a notification to you via email when it's done. Uh, a lot of, quite often I'm doing work here for you and I don't want you to get an email at midnight saying, you know, your import's complete. It's confusing. So turn that off. So now Zoho is chewing on those three files and it will, it has to put them into the right module and then map the fields. And then we're going to walk through that process that we did last time. It's going to be three times. It shouldn't take too long. So it figured out that accounts ought to go into the accounts module and that contacts ought to go into contacts and notes ought to go into notes. Um, maybe I can show you. Here's all the modules in my current system. So I can bring in calls, I can bring in deals or documents or layouts or events, you know. So it figured out that I have three files and I probably want to put them into accounts, contacts and notes and it did it right, so I can go to the next step. Now I've got to map my data, and so the company ID has to be account ID. The billing street, what I call billing street in Zoho is called uh, billing street. Why didn't it map that? I don't really want to walk through every one of these, but I'm just matching up my field names with their field names. State, country, and... Uh, Every time you do this, it remembers it. So when you come back, you don't have to uh, do this a second time. Uh, ID status. I don't think I have a field for ID status. Uh, then I have industry employees. There's a shipping street, which is down here. I could skip all this stuff, by the way. However, in CRM, fields with a little red star are mandatory and must be populated. So I have account ID and account name must be populated. Um, so I've done enough here. I'll bring website in. We have it. It did. So that's the accounts module. Then I have to do the same thing for the contacts. Uh, date of birth, if it's in here, date of birth. Um, let's see what's mandatory in contacts. And last name is mandatory, so I need to get uh, first name. We'll put that in. I'm skipping a lot of fields just in the interest of time. Um, there's last name. It's mandatory. If I try to proceed without mapping last name, it will uh, yell at me. Uh, personal email. Uh, so these are the fields down here that are already mapped. And then these are the ones that I'm not mapping into yet. So if I want to map into their Twitter handle, I have to have a field for it. So I'll skip that. Um, some of the fields are not correctly chosen format. So the birth date is not right. Um, looks like the two examples I have here, I can't see the, the pattern. So I'm just going to skip it. Not going to get hung up on it. We're not going to bring in birth date. And uh, now I'm doing notes and the notes I have a uh, way, way more here than we need. I don't think contact ID will be a uh, parent ID that's required. And then the note content is 
Node ID. We have, sorry, we have to have a Let's see where the note content is. If I try to save it, uh, note title or note content is not there. All right, so we will put in note type as the note title. Uh, but I do need content, and I don't see the content of the note over here. Uh, well, it's right here. Should be note content is the note. All right. So it's saved. I did all my mappings and it's showing me my fields that are mapped. Again, this is a lot of work. It's a one-time thing, but now when I do it, it will start chewing through the system. This could take a few minutes. It could take an hour. Um, it'll tell you when it's done. You'll actually start to see uh, numbers change here. If you did something really wrong and it skips more than 5,000 records, it will just stop the whole process and let you know that something's wrong. So you're allowed to have 5,000 bad records. And also, you can stop this at any time by hitting discard, and it will back everything out and stop. So if you start to see the numbers go south, uh, you can do something there. Um, so, it, so far, it's bringing in 1,261 accounts. It skipped zero, so it's starting there. And uh, because I didn't bring in users, every one of these accounts and contacts are going to be assigned to me. Uh, I am the guy doing the import. It doesn't know who else to give it to. So if the record owner is important, you need to import users as well, which is what I had on my list of records. They're just bad. So this is still working. I'm actually going to show you the results. They're incomplete, but we can actually start seeing a lot of accounts in here. Oh, look, we've got 1,696 contacts, but 204 got skipped. Again, I can click on the 204, and um, last name was empty. Again, people in the other system had a contact name, Joe, uh, not good form. But uh, some fields here, are it got skipped as a result. So uh, you might say, good enough, bad data. I don't want bad data anyway. I just want the good data. Or you might back this out, do something, and fix it. Um, so over here, I'm going to go to accounts, and I should see my 1,200 new accounts. Now I've got 1,273. And here's uh, Menden Pediatrics. Um, no contacts yet, but there's a record. There's an address. I didn't map everything. If you remember, I kind of skipped over a lot of the mapping. So I'm going to back this out when we're done. Um, let's look at our contacts, see what we got there. L.E. Meza. So I have a contact here. Um, no account name yet. But just one, you know, one street. I didn't map all the fields. Um, no notes. Let's see. Again, I've got 170 notes that didn't go in. So this is, it's working. It'll take just a few more minutes, but I was able to bring in, the whole point is, is if you do this right, you can bring in everything at once. Uh, it's really where we get called to do the work. Uh, As soon as it's done, I'm going to back it out. Does anybody have any questions? Um, please put them in chat. So uh, just to summarize. We did a basic module import where we just brought in a bunch of leads. And we did a update and insert. It was called an upsert. Um, then we did a, what's called a data migration. We move everything into Zoho. And of course, you have to have every one of those modules has to be built and built right. Uh, generally, this is something you do once when you're moving into Zoho for the first time. And these ID fields are what link a phone call to a contact and it's what links a contact to an account. So the ID fields are critical. 
Um, and it can be a complicated process. Don't expect to do it all at once. Um, some other random thoughts. If you, if you have 500 or 5,000 records that uh, get skipped, they'll suspend the migration. Um, then you can go into the logs like I did, and they'll tell you why those records didn't go in. And it's because uh, some required field was empty. You may want to loosen your requirement rules. And as always, you can undo it and start over. Be prepared to do that. Um, we'll go back here and look at our results. So it's done. Migration was completed successfully. 337 of my contacts did not go in. Again, I can click on here and I can see why the last name was blank. Mostly um, the email opt out is invalid data. And I'll, that's probably a field typing issue. Um, in Zoho, email opt out is a checkbox and they might have had a Y or an N like a text thing in there. So um, that's a field typing issue. It happens. Uh, so I am going to go back to... Uh, if I hit get started, it just takes you back to your system. So I'm going to go to the wrench to import, to import history. And there's my migration. So there is my lead import. Here's my migration. I can click down here under view migrated modules. It shows each of my modules and what got skipped. Again, I can go in here and look at the results. But I can also, I could back out just the notes or just the contacts. But if I go up here, I can undo the entire import. And I'm gonna, because that was an incomplete import. And it'll take another two minutes or so. If you have, you know, a million records, which Zoho will easily handle, it can take a while, obviously. Uh, you'll get emails saying when it's done, but it's telling me undo is in progress. So now everything I did just got yanked out. And that's how you import. Um, the trick is getting data in a format that Zoho is uh, happy with. Uh, Zoho is not difficult, but it's still data has to be right. If we have a, a currency field, then the data going in ought to look like currency. Or if it's a date field, it ought to look like a date. And we saw in this case, some records didn't come in because the data was not the right format. Uh, the transform part of things should probably be done in Excel, um, but be careful with Excel. Uh, Excel likes to do things like take a five-digit zip code, say it's in New England, where the first digit is a zero, and it'll take the zero off. So you got to have some Excel skills um, to format that. A uh, question from Cameron, if you want to correct the data that was skipped and import after, would you re-import the original file? Uh, you could, but I find it easier just to pull it out and uh, do it again until everything goes in right. So now it says my undone is done and all those records are gone. Um, if I go to accounts, I'm back to, uh, huh? Oh, 12 and back down to 12. So all those records are gone. Um, and that's importing. I kind of, you know, I glossed over it. The way you get good at this is you do a million of them like we have. Um, moving data, uh, deduping it, getting it into the right format. Uh, experience counts for a lot. But Zoho makes it about as easy as it can possibly be, especially with the migration wizard. You just throw the files in there and it chews on them and it made a lot of correct guesses. Um, used to be a lot harder in the old days. Okay, uh, let's take a quick look at our website and see what next week's topic is. And we're getting to a point where you guys make the call and pick the topics. I wanted to do like the first five or six or just kind of uh, sales IQ. Oh, okay. Well, that has nothing to do with Sequence, but it is kind of a cool product. Um, stick, stick around for that. Sales IQ will show you who's on your website and what brought them there and let you chat with them. Uh, a lot of people don't know those things. They don't know who's on their website right now. So we'll talk about that next week. 
Uh, thanks, everybody. If you have any more questions, I'll stick around. I'm going to stop recording.